Hello Commanders, welcome back to another Elite Dangerous video with Commander Shinakuma. Today we're going to be taking a look where we can reliably find sources of Grade 5 engineering data. It's been about six weeks since I launched my video on where to reliably find manufactured and raw materials for engineering. And in that video I promised that a data video would follow shortly. So it turns out that finding a reliable source of Grade 5 data that you can come back to again and again is very, very difficult. Um, and it took some finding, but I think I've finally cracked it. So here we go, and I'll show you what I found. Now, there are four main types of engineering data we're going to be looking at today, although there are more types of data in general. The first are abnormal compact emissions data. Now, these are used in scanners and weapons. Then the all-important data mined wake exceptions for um, frame shift drive upgrades. Then we're going to be looking at um, peculiar shield frequency data for shield boosters and shield generators. Again, these are the two that don't really get used for engineering, although they are important for unlocking engineers. And then the all-important modified embedded firmware which, let's face it, what you really want is cracked industrial firmware for engine upgrades and various other things. We're going to start out with data mined wake exceptions, although I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's been done to death by virtually every YouTuber out there. You need to find a system in famine using EDDB. Once you've found it, you want to sort the population to the highest you can possibly find. In this instance, we've found a prime candidate here with 4 billion um, population. And we're going to fly over there and we're going to be looking for distribution centers. Now we've found our system, we need to look at what we need to take. And that is our frame shift wake scanner. Now, if you're lucky, you're able to upgrade the range a bit. The standard range is 4 kilometers. But with the upgrades on this, I've managed to get the range up to 8.8 .8 kilometers, so we can easily scan them wakes from a distance. So here we are in system, and we're going to be looking for distribution centers. Now, you cannot detect a distribution center until you're within a thousand light seconds of it. So let's give the system a scan just to make sure that we've found everything there is to find. So there aren't any distribution centers that immediately pop up. Um, but given the system has got a 4 billion population, there's bound to be one. So all I'm going to do is head for the nearest planet outside of the 1000 light year range, fly towards it. Hopefully one's going to pop out. Now you might ask, why are we even bothering to go to the highest population? Why not go to a closer one? So distribution centers start popping up in famine systems with a population over 100,000. But even though it's got a distribution center, the frequency of which ships visit the distribution center is quite low in a low population system. So you're looking maybe one or two once every five minutes. In a system with more than a billion population, you've basically got a constant stream of ships jumping in and out. So you've got a constant stream of wakes to scan, which is why we're looking for the highest we can. So we approach the planet. Um, and what should pop up a distribution center so we're going to fly towards it going to drop into it and we're going to pick the video up there so here we are we've just dropped into the distribution center and your first job is to not crash into the three type nines and then you want to get into the habit of scanning them because the type nines can give out classified scan data banks which although not required for engineering are required for unlocking engineers to do engineering so get into the habit of scanning them. So now we've scanned all the Type 9s, we're going to simply scan the wakes of the ships jumping out. Um, a reliable way to do this is go onto the Contacts tab and look for High Energy FSD Wake. Again, the longer range scanner you have, the easier this is. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a little bit of flying back and forth and just start scanning them wakes. So here we can see. We've started to pick up some wakes. Now that wasn't a grade 5 one, but anything you pick up is useful because you're not always only going to be um, upgrading to grade 5. Um, and it's a little bit better if you don't have to trade, but again, you can if you want. So just start scanning those wakes. 
Nothing there. Another one. Nope. A bit too eager on the thumb action there. No luck there, so we're just going to carry on. So I've just sped up the footage here a little bit. As you can see, I'm just um, sat on the spot, scanning wakes, and before you know it, what should pop up? Data mind wake exceptions, and we've only been at it a few minutes. So the next data we're going to take a look at is modified embedded firmware. Now it helps if you get allied with any faction, pretty much any station, it doesn't matter where, and go to the passenger board because these are the most peaceful ways of getting this and quickest in many instances. So let's take a look at what we can find here. This passenger here, VIP, wants to go a maximum of 150 light years, three jumps, well I say three jumps, three stops, maybe five or six jumps for five modified embedded firmware. This passenger here wants to go on a trip 110 light years, again, three maybe four jumps, and that would be eight modified embedded firmware, which translates to about 52 cracked industrial firmware, which again is heavily used in engine modifications and weapon modifications. Again, nothing really more to say on this, get allied with any faction and run simple missions. Now the last two sources of data are the ones that gave me a real nightmare to make this video and they were abnormal compact emissions data and peculiar shield frequency data. Now traditional wisdom um, on the internet says uh, get good just go to a Hazrez site and scan ships noob and whilst that's not strictly wrong it's not really reliable. You get to a Hazrez and there's no one in it. Or you get there and the wrong type of ships, they're not big enough, they're not advanced enough. And you can scan them for hours and hours and hours and get nothing. It's an absolute pain in the ass. There had to be a better way. So, first thing you need to do is get the Isinor Pass. Isinor is a system um, located slap bang in the middle of the bubble. And it's got a very special site where we can get these data types. I'll put the name on screen because I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's super easy to get the system pass. Lots of the surrounding sites of this um, system have minor factions allied to this particular place. It took me a maximum of 30 minutes running boom data missions to get the pass. So let's find out what, the, what all the fuss about this system is. So here we are in the ISNAR system and what we're looking for is this this unauthorized installation. It's always going to be there um, and you're going to head towards it and we'll take a look at what we find when we drop in. So here we are, we're just about to drop in. <clears throat> now in order to find the two types of data we're looking for, you need to scan combat focus ships and ideally the higher grade, the higher rank, the better because the better the chance you'll get of getting the data you want. Now, every time you drop into this system, there will be a battle between these two sections of pirates. And as you can see, it ranges from Federal um, Corvettes, um, Imperial Cutters, Anacondas and Pythons, and in the vast majority of cases, their elite status. So we're just going to scan these ships. And then when we finish scanning the ships, we're going to re-log into another solo session. This whole battle will start again and we'll scan them all over again. So let's um, take a few minutes to see what we find. Ideally, try and stay within about 6k of the battle. Otherwise, depending on your ship scanners, um, you'll be a little bit too far away. So here we have our first lot of data, unexpected emissions data. So it's a grade three data, but it's used in grade five efficient beam lasers. Probably one of the most efficient modification for beam lasers out there. So let's carry on scanning and see what we find. So 
So we've scanned everything there is to scan. We didn't get particularly lucky on that one, so we're just going to log back into a solo session. I'm going to try all over again. As you can see, we've got a brand new battle just started with all new high-end ships to scan. A nice juicy result there, aberrant shield pattern analysis used in grade 5 shield boosters and grade 5 shield generator upgrades. Let's carry on. Some more unexpected emissions data there. Um, really good result, but still not quite the grade 5 jackpot. Oh, and more aberrant shield pattern analysis. Again, grade 4 data, um, pretty much as high as you'll need, but again, still not grade 5. A nice little double data drop there of useful data, but again, not grade 5. And after not very long, we get our first grade 5 data drop, which is abnormal compact emissions data. So, um, we spent, what, 5 minutes in that site um, scanning. Um, granted, we didn't find any peculiar shield data this time, but it does pop up. I just didn't find any when I was filming, but it but it is there. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is what I like to call potluck data, and it's raiding mega ships, specifically the Lowell class science vessel that circulates in and around Shinrata Desra in the middle of the bubble. It's a um, CBM-511 and it does a circuit of seven systems, the path of which I will leave in the description of the video. Now from this science vessel, you can get anything from grade one to grade five data of absolutely any type. It's generated purely at random. In order to raid the ship, you're gonna need three things. You're gonna need a recon limpet controller. You're gonna need some heat sinks, depending on the heat output of your ship. And last but not least, you're going to need some limpets. As you can see, I had to synthesize some myself. And here I'm just setting up my um, fire groups to make sure that I've got the controllers and data link scanners online. So we've dropped into the ship location. The reason I like this ship, amongst all of the other mega ships, is A, it's in the center of the bubble, easy to find. And B, it only requires one recon limpet to unlock the data. Some ships require two or three increasing the time and the danger. So first thing to do is to close to within a um, sensible distance and scan the whole ship with your data link scanner. You get this fancy animation. Then you need to locate the ship's transmitter, which you can either do visually if you know where it is, or use the contacts tab to find the hackable data transmitter. And in this instance, it looks like it's on the other side of the ship. For some reason, I'm going backwards. So let me just get that sorted and we'll get round to the hackable scanner now. There you go. So I'm just going to flip it round using my thrusters. And we need to close to within 300 metres of the scanner in order to be able to scan it. So we select the scanner and again we use our data link scanner. So did I say 300 meters? It would appear I'm wrong, it's 250 meters. There you go. So now we've selected the scanner, we need to go to the menu and select sub targets and the dockable area for the recon. So we now need to deploy, well now we need to select our recon limpets but we don't fire them yet we go into silent running first then we fire the recon limpet because if you do it before the ship's guns will open fire on you and now we wait 
we can see in the bottom left hand panel the progress of the drone. It's not going to take very long. Although I do have a heat sink just in case my heat gets too high. There you go. And as you can see, I had a whole lot of data scan up in the top right hand corner. Now in order to do it again, we simply log out. Back into another solo session. And we're going to get put back exactly where we left off. select the ship. We're a little bit too close to scan it so we're just going to have to reverse a little bit. So remember the order of this. Scan the whole ship, then close to within 250 meters of the hackable data transmitter. Then scan the transmitter with the data link scanner and prepare your recon drones but don't fire them. Select the docking port go into silent running, deploy your drone. And this time I'm just going to focus on the data area in the video so we can see what we get. So, I definitely saw some grade 3 and grade 4 shield data in there. I uh, didn't see any grade 5, but that's purely potluck. And you can simply rinse and repeat this method as many times as you like, for as many limpets as you've got. So this concludes today's video on where to find data for engineering purposes. Hopefully you found the video useful. If you have, please feel free to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll be back soon with more Elite Dangerous content very, very soon. This is Commander Shinokuma signing off. I'll see you in space.